So yeah, so the next thing we have to do is do some operations that will hopefully, uh, um, I don't know, do some like cool cancellations or like get some cool stuff out of this, this uh, superposition. So, uh, as you may remember, like the next step of this paradigm was like do the Hadamard transform. Which, uh, I'll explain what it is shortly. It's some kind of Fourier transform. And at the highest level, what is Fourier transforms? You probably encountered them at some point in some other class. Somehow, like a Fourier transform, like takes like a, a signal, which really just means like a bunch of data, a bunch of numbers, and it like transforms it into like another signal. Like it transforms it by like finding like the sort of frequencies or spikes in the data. So like somehow it like takes a bunch of data and like finds like the patterns in it. That's the best thing I can say about what a Fourier transform does. And um, this Hadamard transform is some kind of uh, uh, Fourier transform. And we'll see by the end of next lecture that like whenever you do this Hadamard transform, which by the way is literally just doing Hadamard on all the qubits, um, it takes like any like data that you've like loaded into the amplitudes of your n qubits and transforms the amplitudes so that then after you do it, the amplitudes like represent the different frequencies in the original data. Like somehow like the new, after you do the, the Hadamard transform, like the amplitude on zero, one, zero will represent like how much of the frequency labeled by zero, one, zero was in the original data. Now you'll probably be like, I don't get it, but we're, we're gonna get it. Um, but that's sort of the plan. So, uh, as I said, this Hadamard transform, this literally just means, like, do Hadamard all. Which is, like, this instruction that we remember even from, like, lecture one. And really, this just means, like, Hadamard B1, Hadamard B2, Hadamard B3, down to Hadamard Bn. Now, uh, as you know, like, we kind of got tired of square root of halves, so we're like, we're not going to call this, do Hadamard all. We're going to do this, like, add indifference all. And it's literally the same thing. It's just like we're allowing ourselves to start using unnormalized states because we don't want to be annoyed by these square root of halves. But now I'm going to do something like funny, which like may annoy you, but like we're going to do it. Uh, I'm going to be like, yeah, when going from Hadamard to all to add and diff all, we're like, let's artificially stick uh, a factor of root two onto the amplitudes so that things were nicer. Uh, now I would like to artificially stick a factor of square root a half onto the amplitudes because it'll make the amplitudes nicer. So I'm now, this is, this is gonna be annoying, but like I'm now defining for you like yet a third pseudonym for like Hadamard, uh, which I'm gonna call um, average and deviation all. Okay, so this average and deviation is gonna be equivalent to Hadamard and equivalent to add and diff. It's just like, a different way of like going to unnormalized amplitudes. So let me do this definition. Okay, so like this instruction of like average and uh, deviation on a qubit A, it's a one qubit operation, just like Hadamard. This is just shorthand for doing it on all the qubits. Um, is like similar to add and diff A. Um, it's just, uh, it's like equivalent to this, like Hadamard A, and then like multiply all amplitudes by square root of half. Okay, so it's really just Hadamard, but then you're like, ah, I'm gonna like change all the amplitudes by the same factor to make my life less annoying. And like add and diff was the same thing, except we like divided all amplitudes by square root of half. So again, it's just like some kind of like different bookkeeping. Um, but let me say uh, how you think about it. 
So the reason we went to like add and diff was like the definition of Hadamard was like really annoying. It had square root of halves, and we were like, oh, add and diff has like a very simple definition. Like the new amplitude on zero is the sum of the amplitudes. The new amplitude on one is the difference of the amplitudes. It's going to be very similar. So um, for like av, sorry, for like average and deviation on a, if you do this, um, if like the old like amplitudes on 0 and 1 were x and y, then the new amplitudes are um, uh, x plus y over 2 on 0 and x minus y over 2 on 1. Okay. So really, like, you could say, like, this is just the same as, like, add and diff, except we, like, divide it by two. We divide all the amplitudes by two. Yes, that's true. And, like, Hadamard is just the same as this as well, except, like, you divide all the amplitudes by square root of two, which is annoying. Uh, but this is, like, not annoying, because, like, this has, like, you know, some, like, psychological, like, meaning to it. You're like, oh, yes, this is the average of the two incoming amplitudes. And you're like, this is, like, the amount by which the two amplitudes like deviate from the average. So like, if this is the number line, if this is x, and this is y, okay, then their average is here. This is the average, and like the deviation is like this amount, and it's also this amount. Okay, so for example. Uh, for example, let's say uh, we had this like state where the amplitudes were integers because we really went crazy with unnormalized states. Like if we had seven amplitude on zero and five, uh, let's say three amplitude on one, definitely an unnormalized state. Okay, what happens if after you do average and deviate, deviate deviation? Uh, well, the average of seven and three is five. <laughs> And the amount by which these guys differ from the average is 2. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, or you can also think like, oh, this is expressing the fact that 7, 3 is um, 5 plus or minus 2. Okay, this is all like bookkeeping, because I mean, this is really the same as like add and diff. You know, we just like x plus y and x minus y, we just divide it by 2. But somehow, like, it's good psychologically sometimes to, like, think of it this way. Cool. This will also, like, okay, normally it will give you, like, an unnormalized state. So, like, after you do your instructions, it doesn't matter if you do Hadamard or consider Hadamard to be this or consider it to be this. It's really doing the same thing. You'll just get, like, a different normalization constant. And so when you finally get around to, like, doing extract all and you're like, okay, now's the time where I better normalize everything properly so I can square the amplitudes to get the probabilities, you know, that's when you'll have to figure out, like, what the normalization factor you need to correct for is. But actually, there's one more, like, um, attractive aspect of this average and deviation instruction, uh, which is, okay, we know that at, at some point we check that Hadamard is its own undo. If you do Hadamard on A and then you do Hadamard again, it's literally equivalent to doing nothing. And therefore, like, uh, add and diff is also its own undo, except that, like, you might have to fix the normalization constant at the end. And similarly, average and deviation is its own undo, except that you might have to fix the normalization constant at the end. But what's, like, kind of amusing is if you do, like, one add and diff and one average and deviation, they, like, fix each other's normalization constants. So, like, if you do, like, average, sorry, if you do, like, add and diff, on A, and then you do average and deviation on A, not only is this equivalent to doing nothing, like you don't even have to fix the normalization constant. In the sense that if you had a norm properly normalized state here and then do these two things, you end up with a properly normalized state here. And there's a couple ways to see that. Like one way to see that is that like, you know, 
Add and diff is just like Hadamard, except you like um, you divide it by square root of half. And average and deviation is just like Hadamard, except you multiply by square root of half. So like you multiply by root half once, and you divide it by it once, so they cancel each other out. Or you can just see it from like this thing, like maybe this is the backwards way, but here we had seven and three, and we did average and deviation, and we got to five and two. Now if we did add and diff with five and two, we would get back to seven and three, like literally exactly. Okay, so this is just like a very pleasant bookkeeping fact. Um, and it has the property that like, let's say you have some quantum code which has like 10 Hadamard instructions in it. Um, okay, so you could leave them all Hadamards and everything would stay normalized properly the whole time, but like sometimes that's annoying. What's like very pleasant is you change five of them to uh, add and diff, and you change five of them to average and deviation. And because you have like the same number of add and diffs as average and deviations, like you, you inserted the same number of square root half factors as you like took out, and therefore like at the end it'll be perfectly normalized. So like it's always like my favorite move to convert half my Hadamars to a, um, add and diff and half of them to average and deviation. Okay, that was like a little side tangent about like just yet another name for this Hadamard instruction. Is there any question about it? So in fact, we're gonna exactly use that trick in the, the paradigm. So if you remember the stuff I erased here, like we imagined that, you know, step one, we prepared the uniform superposition. And we did that by, officially we did that by like Hadamarding on all the qubits, but we're like, oh, let's make it less annoying by doing add and diff on all the qubits. So we did like n add and diffs, and we got to the thing that was like all ones. Then we did like if f then minus. So we got the whole truth table in plus or minus one notation into our amplitudes. And now I'm gonna tell you I wanna do the Hadamard transform just because like it's gonna be cool. Let's see what happens. So we gotta do the Hadamard transform. That really involves like doing Hadamard on all the qubits. And I'm like, oh, this time let's call these n Hadamard instructions average and deviation. And then it'll be convenient because like at the end of this whole story, even though we went to unnormalized states, we came back at the end to a normalized state. It's not a big deal. We could just do it however with any of these that we wanted and make sure to normalize at the end. So this is like a, a convenient way because we'll definitely end with a normalized state. Okay. So uh, now we're gonna do this Hadamard transform and it takes all these plus and minuses. I mean, you know, and like it, 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 uh, it organizes the edges in the horizontal way and does average and deviation. Then it organizes them in the vertical way and does average and deviation. Then it organizes them in the in and out way and does average and deviation. What the heck is the result? That's what we want to figure out. What, what happens when you do this? Uh, why are you doing this? It's because somebody told me, trust, trust me, like it'll be a good idea. Uh, but yeah, what happens when you do this? That's what we want to answer. So a major question, which we're gonna study over this lecture and the next is, you know, uh, what happens when you do average and deviation on all the qubits to the amplitudes if you do average and deviation to all of them? Okay, and uh, the full answer to this question, the full answer to this question will only be revealed next lecture. Well, I don't wanna say will only be revealed, but like, it takes some time to build up to it. So by the end of next lecture, we will have the full answer to this question. Um, but today, I wanna give you like a partial answer. So today, I'm not gonna tell you, like if you start in some state like this and do average and deviation on all the qubits, what will all the new two to the n amplitudes be? I will just tell you what the new amplitude on all zeros is. And the reason I do that is because the new amplitude on all zeros has a very clear meaning. So a partial answer is that the resulting amplitude on the all zeros basic state is the average of 
all the plus or minus one truth table entries. Okay, and I will show you why this is true. And uh, maybe even you're like, it's maybe not so surprising that it's true, because you're like, oh, you're somehow doing an, average, uh, an instruction with average in its name to all the qubits, and you're telling me that like one of the answers is the average of all the amplitudes. Yes. Um, so I'll talk about why this is true shortly, and then we'll talk about why we might care about the fact that this is what the answer is. Uh, and you know, we're not going to talk about just now and like what will be the new amplitude on all these other basic states. We'll get to that. Um, let me also add that like the fact that this answer is true does not rely on the fact that like these are all the plus or minus one truth table entries of some function. In fact, more generally, it's true that like if you start with some qubits in any old superposition state where this amplitude is a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, and you do average and deviation to all the qubits, then the resulting amplitude on the all zeros basic state will just be the average of a, b, c, d, e, f, g, and h. Okay. So, yeah, I now want to justify this partial answer. And um, similarly, I'm going to kind of do it by example. I'll like do an example up to n equals 3, and then you'll be like, okay, yeah, I get it. Okay, so let's do the proof of the partial answer. By example, and I'll actually do it by like considering n equals one, then n equals two, then n equals three, and so forth. So like, let's just imagine n is one. So you know, if you were to draw this picture, like the whole picture would just look like this. Uh, this is zero. Oops, this is zero. This is one. You have some amplitude x here. You have some amplitude y here. And, you know, maybe this qubit is A, and you do, like, average and deviation on A. Well, what happens? Well, by definition, I sort of told you what happens. If you do this, then, like, this thing gets the average, x plus y over 2, and this thing gets the deviation of these two things from the average, which is x minus y over 2. And what am I trying to prove to you? I'm trying to prove to you that the amplitude that you get on the basic state where all the qubits are zero is like the average of everything. And you're like, yep. I mean, this is the basic state where everything is zero, and what amplitude we get? We got the average of all two amplitudes, x and y. So, all right, it checked out. OK. Uh, what about the n equals 2 case? Okay, well, uh, let's say we start from like a completely generic state. Say we start from uh, some completely generic state, which I'll depict in this way. Um, or maybe like B1 will be the vertical direction, B2 will be the horizontal direction. Okay, so this is a 0, 0. This one is 1, 0. This one is 1, 1. This one is 0, 1. And let's just say we start from anywhere. We have like amplitudes like x, y, z, and w. OK, that's our starting state. And now we're going to do uh, average and deviation on all, the, all two of the qubits. So OK. Um, so let's say we first, we're going to do this. We're going to do average and deviation on B1. And then we're going to do average and deviation on B2. OK, so what happens after we do average and deviation on B1? Well, again, that's like, OK, you pair up the, the, the vertices according to B1 direction. This is this one changing. So you do this pair and this pair. 
And you just do this like average and deviation operation on each of them. So this is x and z, so this will go to like x plus z over 2. And this will go to x minus z over 2. And similarly, here we have y and w. This will go to like y plus w over 2. This will go to y minus w over 2. And that's like this instruction. Now, what I'm going to say here actually is we really didn't need to bother calculating these bottom two. Because um, all I am going to eventually be interested in is the question, OK, by the end of this, how much amplitude do you have here? That's what we're trying to figure out in the n equals 2 case. We're trying to confirm that like, at the end of this, the amplitude you have here is the overall average of the original four numbers. Um, and what's going to happen next is we're going to be doing this like average and deviation on the B2 direction. So we're going to be averaging and deviating these two, and also average and deviating these two. But like, we only care what ends up here. So like, we don't even care what's going on down here. I, I wrote it anyway, just so that we could be proper, but we don't precisely care. Uh, but OK, so now the next thing we're going to do is do average and deviation in the B2 direction. So that's like we take, you know, these two amplitudes and do average and deviation, and also these two amplitudes and average and deviation. But again, we really only care what ends up here. So like, I don't even care what's going on down here. And when I'm doing this, you know, what goes here is the average of these two numbers, and what goes here is I don't care. I mean, it's actually the you know, deviation of the, between these two numbers, but I really only care about what goes here, so I need to compute the average of these two numbers. And that is, uh, it's getting a little bit messy, but like the amplitude on all zeros is, well, it's the average of the two numbers x plus z over 2 and y plus w over 2. Okay, so it's like the average of the averages. And indeed, you know, that's x plus y plus z plus w over 4. And that is like the overall, like the average of the uh, original four numbers. OK. Uh, that was n equals 2. I'm going to do one more n to try to convince you of this partial answer. And uh, luckily, I have this diagram here. So we're still doing proof by example of this partial answer. And we're still doing you know, this picture. Um, and what's going on in this picture? OK, let me erase what we had here. What you can really imagine was like if n is 3, then you know, initially at the very beginning, maybe you had like x, y, z, w, a, b, c, d. And uh, you know, you did average and deviation on b1. Uh, I kind of did the up and down average. Average and deviation on b2, I did the left and right average. You see, like, everything that happens on the front face equally well happens on the back face. Like, the n equals 2 case like, applies to the front face and to the back face because like, you do the same operations on them. So we kind of know, after doing the first two instructions, that like, what do we eventually get? You know, some stuff happens, and don't really care what happens here, but like, after the first two instructions, this eventually becomes x plus y plus z plus w over 4. It becomes the average of the stuff on the front face. But then, equally well, the same thing happened on the back face. So like, I don't really know what's happening here, here, or here. But I do know that like, on the all zeros uh, corner here, uh, this is just going to be like a plus b plus c plus d over 4. So I kind of know that after these first two instructions, uh, I get the average of the front face at all zeros and then 0. And I get the average of the back face at all zeros and then 1. I'm not really sure what's going on in the other ones, but luckily, I don't need to know what's going on in the other ones. Because again, all I'm really trying to figure out is what will be the amplitude on all zeros when I do the last average and deviation in the B3 direction. So when I do the last average and deviation in the B3 direction, it's like I pair up all the edges in the B3 direction, and I do average and deviation. 
And uh, luckily, like I only need to focus on this edge. And you know, what I finally, finally get here after the final, uh, the final operation. This is the zero side, so I get the average of this and this. And on the one side, I get the deviation. Well, I don't care. I don't even care what I get there. So what here I finally get is the average of the two numbers, x plus y plus z plus w over 4, and a plus b plus c plus d over 4. OK, and well, what's that? It's like the average of the averages. It's like. It's the whole average. It's the average of like uh, everything. X, Y, Z, W, A, B, C, D. OK, does this make sense? Sound reasonable? And had there actually I've been f four qubits all along, then OK, if I had like alpha, beta, gamma, delta, blah, blah, blah over here, then it'd be a similar situation where you know, at this point, I'd have like alpha plus beta plus blah, 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 plus omega over 8. And then if I did one more average and deviation that like linked things up in the cross direction, these two things would get averaged yet again, and I'd have the average of all 16 original amplitudes. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.